if there's a day to give back to those in our community, today is the day. It's Giving Tuesday across the globe, including here at home. Here at KMTV, we are proud of our community and all it's doing to help others. And tonight, we're bringing you a special program, KMTV Shares Kindness, which will showcase some of the work Omaha and Council Bluffs is doing to give back. And at any time, if you'd like to make a contribution, you can scan the QR code on your screen with your smartphone to go to the Giving Tuesday website. And we have all of our team all over the Metro tonight. Three News Now reporter John Kipper joins us live from the Collective Hope, where they're decorating their space for the Tinsel and Tears program. And Three News Now reporter Isabella Basco is in Council Bluffs, where TS Bank is collecting canned goods and diapers to help those in need. Weather Alert meteorologist Chris Swaim is live tonight. He joins us from the Intercultural Senior Center and will share more about the program they're raising money for. And Three News Now reporter Dan Danielle Davis joins us from Turner Park, where secret kindness agents are working on a special project. But first, what exactly is Giving Tuesday? Well, the global movement started in 2012. It encourages people to do good through volunteering, donating, and celebrating generosity. Giving Tuesday falls on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving every year, and Share Omaha took over local efforts in 2019. And this year, Share Omaha will focus on cash donations, and they also encourage volunteerism and donation of items. Share Omaha provides a platform for more than 600 local causes. Prior to Share Omaha's formation, donations were located and collected through Omaha Gives. After donating $58 million for Omaha and Council Bluff nonprofits over eight years, the last giving day was May of 2020. And now thanks to a new partnership with Share Omaha, the Omaha Metro has a single website for online giving and volunteer opportunities. In 2018, Giving Tuesday raised $820,000 with the message being heard around 593,000 times. That only increased in the years after. In 2019, the first year of the Share Omaha campaign, $1.69 million were raised with the message heard 7.1 million times. 35% of people were first time donors and last year was the biggest yet. The money raised was $3.16 million and the message was heard 19.5 million times. Since Omaha shares took over, here are some of the amounts of items donated. In 2019, 8,247 items were donated. 432 volunteers helped that Giving Tuesday. In 2020, 28,962 items were donated, and that's a value of nearly $33,000. 397 volunteers helped during the pandemic. And let's look at our KMTV kindness map. This shows where all of our crews are. And let's go ahead and head over to Turner Park, where 3 News Now reporter Danielle Davis is. Hi, Danielle. Vanessa, I tell you what, Santa and his elves aren't the only ones afoot this holiday season. The secret kindness agents have already been out putting up hats, scarves and gloves here at Turner Park so those in need get to stay warm this holiday season. These trees are filled with a special type of Omaha kindness. In our little corner of the world, we call it Giving Tuesday 402 and Giving Tuesday 712 in Southwest Iowa. And we try really hard to shine the light on as many nonprofits as possible. We want the entire sector to really feel a swell of generosity and a boost today. Sheer Omaha has partnered with the Secret Kindness Agents for the past few years, allowing the spirit of the holiday giving season to exist by giving things like coats, hats, scarves, and even hand warmers. Not everyone has cash to give, but most have an unused and gently worn item or two that they can donate. Of course, cash matters to nonprofits, but there's practical needs to be met as well. And if we can do that as well as showing our generosity and service as well as gifts, that's fantastic. Moss says getting the community involved in contributing to something bigger than themselves has been one of the biggest rewards ever imagined. We just think that this effort is something remarkable and it's become a tradition for families and the people in the Secret Kindness Agents um, network of people. None of the items will go to waste as anything left over will be donated to local shelters. 
Now all of these items have a little card attached to them. It's in English and in Spanish. And along with letting people know that there is someone out there who cares, it also has a telephone number to let people know if they do need any type of additional assistance. All they need to do is reach out. This is Danielle Davis, 3 News Now in Omaha. Vanessa, back to you. When we come back, we continue to share kindness. We'll go to the Intercultural Senior Center and learn about the work they're doing to help out senior citizens this winter. And welcome back to our KMTV Shares Kindness Special. Our very own Chris Wame is out live tonight. Hi, Chris. How's it going? Hey, Vanessa. It's going great. We're here live at the Intercultural Senior Center. It's a place that uh, does a lot for this community. Many people may not know about it, but we're going to tell you about it in just a minute. First, I want to talk about today where we're headed. It's a big warm up on the way. Here's a live look outside. This is 84th and Dodge, our children's hospital camera. Traffic moving along pretty good. Here's the latest readings from Epley Airfield. We're still at 52 degrees. It was mild today, but temperatures did take a hit. Uh, our warm up put on pause for now. Another big boost Wednesday and into Thursday. Winds out of the south at 8 miles per hour so far. Here's a look at temperatures area wide. Some already in the 40s. Just to check of some of the latest numbers is 48 in Plattsmouth, 46 in Nebraska City, 50 in Lincoln. Temperatures are still pretty mild here this evening and we're on our way to the upper 30s and low 40s tonight. Look at the 24 hour temperature change. While not as impressive as it was earlier, uh, still a big temperature drop. That is to say it's four degrees cooler now in Omaha than it was this time yesterday. 10 degrees cooler in Tacoma, 19 degrees cooler in Falls City. This map will look very different tomorrow as temperatures boost back into the 60s. First, let's talk about tonight down to 40 degrees through the overnight hours. Clouds start to make their way in through the overnight hours. We've seen some of that already. Winds out of the southwest at 10 to 25 miles per hour. That's a key ingredient for our warm up, and it's only going to get stronger as we head into tomorrow. 65 degrees as we head into Wednesday. It'll come with the wind, yes, but certainly some unseasonably warm temperatures. Here's a look at future cast, the timestamp there up top. If you have a particular hour, uh, keep an eye on that. Clouds work their way in. Future cast trying to bring in some spotty showers, but I think we stay dry. Uh, mainly clear skies early Wednesday. Temperatures in the low 40s. This is 630 in the morning as we head more toward mid morning. Readings are generally in the 40s and mainly sunny back to the 50s by the time we get to Omaha and 60 degrees into Plattsmouth and uh, Nebraska City. So our numbers certainly will be boosted tomorrow, but this is just the beginning. I think we can get even warmer as we head into Thursday. Skies not only stay dry, really clear over the next couple of days. It's going to be another run where we don't have much rainfall in the forecast. A pretty par for the course so far for November. It has been such a dry stretch. So we get into Thursday morning, numbers back in the 40s. We're already in the 50s by the time we get to 130. 60s back by the time we get to midday, and I think some will already be pushing the 70 degree mark. Uh, Epley Airfield can get there on Thursday, and if we can get even over 67 degrees, we'll break a record. Here's a look at the forecasted wind. Before we get to that warm up, we have to get through wind gusts that are 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. Some of these numbers will be uh, noticeable for sure. Out of the southwest, so if you travel north or south, a little bit of a crosswind. There's a snapshot 2:30 in the afternoon and evening, where some of these wind gusts are 20, 25 miles per hour. That is bringing in the warm up. That's what we call warm air advection. It's just some jargon to say moving warmer temperatures from the south closer to here. As winds gradually die off late Wednesday, I don't think they'll last into Thursday, but it will be enough to boost our temperatures uh, much warmer through the next couple days. So here's that record warmth. We're talking about 70s in the forecast. The record is 67. It was set back in 1973. I think we can do it pretty handedly. We'll keep an eye on the thermometer, but I think we can get there. Let's look at the seven day forecast where temperatures over the next three days are 60s, 70s, 50s, mainly sunny skies. Little something for everybody. Here's the next seven days, 50s, 40s, and then overnight lows in the 20s. It'll be breezy at times and a little rain chance on Tuesday under partly cloudy skies, but plenty of dry time over the next seven days as readings get cool and warmer. I want to remind you to download the Storm Shield app for a forecast on the go anytime. You can uh, download that and then check out uh, current conditions, a look at the radar, anything that you need on the go so that we can uh, stay updated anytime. But of course, we'll keep you posted. We can't leave without telling you about the Intercultural Senior Center. This is a really good program here in our community. Melissa Barron, uh, this is a program that you guys work with very closely here. Tell me a little bit about what the Intercultural Senior Center does. 
Sure, we serve anyone 50 years and older. Uh, we have activities for seniors during the mm -hmm. day, Monday through Friday, between 8 and 2. We have offer exercise, uh, cultural enrichment activities, yeah. all kinds of things to allow people to come together, um, really from all different cultures, mm -hmm. um, to have some friendship yeah. and, and share together. It's such an important thing, especially coming out of the year that we did. Um, I, we, I got to talk about something tough. I got to say the S word on air. We're talking about snow over the next couple of months. Now, we've been lucky not to have any so far. Something that is manageable for most of us, shoveling, clearing driveways, driving in it, can be a real challenge for people that may have physical challenges or just the ability to do it. That's why we're here today for Giving Tuesday. We're raising money to help seniors clear their driveway. How can people help? Absolutely. Um, people can donate at interculturalseniorcenter.org or share Omaha. We're raising money to make sure that seniors don't have to shovel their walkways mm -hmm. so that they can receive their medicine and they can get food deliveries and um, be safe. And this is from people's donation here um, that they can come find your guys' organization. It's $35 to clear one driveway. Is that right? That's so right. you guys are pooling money now to be able to sustain through the next couple of months. Yeah, absolutely. Ideally, we'd love to be able to help a group of people multiple times uh, this winter. And so that's our goal is to be able to raise enough funds to to do that and keep seniors safe. Sure. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't go without showing you guys the mascot. Uh, this is Lucas. He lives here, right? It's just a little puppy. Uh, Vanessa, I know that you'd appreciate this, but this guy's the mascot here. So if this isn't enough, if we haven't tugged on your heartstrings enough, Help out Lucas, help out the people here. They have a good cause. He even put on his little bandana just for the occasion. Little poodle. But we'll send it back to you. Live from the Intercultural Senior Center, Chris Swaim, 3 News Now. Big fan of that mascot. All right, let's look at our KMTV kindness map again. This shows where all of our crews are. We've been to Turner Park and the Intercultural Senior Center. When we come back, we head to Council Bluffs to see the work they're doing for families in need. And we're continuing our Giving Tuesday coverage all over Council Bluffs. Generosity is spreading in full force. Three News Now reporter Isabella Basco shares the different ways people are helping with the bare necessities. Now, Isabella, how exactly are people coming out and donating tonight? Well, Vanessa, this location, this high V location here on Madison Avenue is just one of three locations where people could drop off their canned goods to Together Food Pantry and then their diapers to New Visions Homeless Services. Like I said, it's one of three locations in Council Bluffs where people could do this. Now, what's been happening is that they started the collections last week and now they're taking all the deliveries today. Go in the back seat with these. We chose canned goods and diapers because it was a simple way to start and an easy way for people to kind of start at the ground level. Donating what you can with the time you have. That's what TS Bank is asking of others. With this last, you know, 18, 20 plus months, there's been a real need in the food pantry. A lot of times they need the fruits and the vegetables, and so that's why we, we kind of saw a gap there, and so we wanted to help fulfill that need. Sizes. We appreciate that a lot. As kids get a little older and you get into some of the bigger sizes of diapers, they get more expensive and, um, you know, having children, you have a lot of added expenses. So we want to try to alleviate some of that stress from them. Heather Beekhuizen with New Visions Homeless Services is focusing on collecting diapers for a holiday event. We typically serve about 5,000 people through this event. And so when folks come through, if they've got a family that needs diapers, um, we'll definitely add those diapers to their packages that we'll be loading into their cars that day. B. Kaisen has seen families go to desperate measures to make up for their lack of diapers. We've seen t-shirts or, you know, like a dishcloth that can be used. And obviously, um, you know, for sanitary reasons, that's not the best, um, you know, not the best situation for those kiddos. This Giving Tuesday can serve as a reminder to help those families doing what they can to scrape by. Regardless if we were a bakery or a shoe shop, banking is that vehicle that we can really help people do more um, and help them in their next stage of life. So we do what we can 
to help them thrive. And we really want us to help everyone else in their story um, and wherever they're at in that chapter of life. And lots of generosity happening across the area. People have donated almost 2,000 diapers and 453 canned goods. Live in Council Bluffs, Isabella Basco, 3 News Now. And let's look at our KMTV kindness map again. This shows where all of our crews are. We've been to Turner Park and the Intercultural Senior Center and to TS Bank in Council Bluffs. But when we come back, we head to the Collective for Hope to hear more about the work they're doing to help those struggling this holiday season. And just a reminder, at the bottom of your screen, there's a QR code. Scan that with your smartphone and it'll take you to the Giving Tuesday website where you can donate or find find more information. The holiday season can be tough on anyone, but especially people that have recently lost a loved one. 3 News Now reporter John Kipper is live at Collective of Hope, which brings people who suffered loss closer together. Yeah, Vanessa, Collective for Hope is here to end the stigma of loss, and they do this through their event, Tinsel and Tears. Today, volunteers made sure to help those in the event feel welcome. On Giving Tuesday, volunteers at Collective for Hope in Central Omaha did a bit of decorating. We really hope that we bring some levity and some normalcy to a really tough conversation. The Christmas decor and stuffed bags with craft kits were put together by a volunteer army from Ventura Med. So I went on the website, saw that um, they were looking for five to ten for here. Um, felt like a great fit. St. Forney and the rest of the volunteers prepared the room for the annual Tinsel and Tears event. It's a free chance for community members who suffered a painful loss to talk with others who've also lost close family and friends. To let them know that they're loved and supported um, and there is help for them and hopefully this little bit of help for Greece Journey, Tinsel and Tears will be even just a shed of light in a very dark place for many people. Tinsel and Tears plan for this coming weekend and for the Saturday after that, hopes to bring those grieving together. So giving them a place to go, um, an opportunity to have a conversation, whether this is the first holiday without their loved one or the 60th holiday without their loved one. Um, it just gives them a place to have support during a time that could be really lonely for them. Kelly Morris with Collective for Hope says everybody grieves for a loved one at some point and they hope to support them and normalize their feelings and conversations about them. Folks don't want to do their traditional holiday traditions, that's okay. So we can give them the permission to say, like, you don't have to do the thing you've done for 20 years because your person's not here. You can make a new memory. And if you want to take part in the event Tinsel and Tears as one of those that is suffering the loss of a loved one, the online window to sign up has closed, but you can simply uh, call Collective for Hope and they will sign you up. Reporting in Omaha, John Kipper, 3 News Now. All right, and switching gears here, we're going to go ahead and take a live look at the Share Omaha website. You can head there by going to shareomaha.org. So far, more than $2 million has been raised as of 6 tonight. And here's a live look outside the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge. You can see it's lit up half in purple, half in red for Giving Tuesday. Beautiful sight. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back. Giving Tuesday donations continue to break records. According to data from Share Omaha, donations were significantly up last year. In 2019, $1.69 million were raised, and in 2020, $3.16 million were raised. And of course, there's still time for you to help. Visit our website, 3newsnow.com, for more resources, or visit shareomaha.org for a list of organizations you can help. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight at 10.